coming to you on Advent Sunday at the start of a new church year. Um, please sit, I've got a few notices. Uh, first of all, a very warm welcome to Bishop Nicholas, uh, come uh, to preside and to preach for us today and to visit us. I uh, will be staying for a bit of tea and coffee afterwards. Absolutely, it's certainly fantastic. Well, please do uh, enjoy the chance to get to chat to Bishop Nicholas after that. Uh, second notice, um, thank you everyone, um, Hilary and the whole team, for putting on such a really good Christmas fair yesterday. Um, those who know about these things, I've never seen one before, said it went really well. So um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, and then I guess the, um, the third notice is going to be a fairly obvious one about the Omicron uh, variant that's been in the news of late. Uh, you're, lots of you are wearing masks, thank you for that. Uh, we will probably be bringing back uh, in various restrictions, depending on what the Church of England says, so keep your eyes peeled, please do bring a mask next Sunday. If you haven't got a mask but you want one, you've got there is a supply at the back as well. Um, but we'll keep our masks on for singing if that's okay. Um, I can't force you to do anything, but I, I'd invite you to do that just as uh, we gear up for winter. Uh, hopefully, all of our Christmas services and everything can go ahead as planned. Um, but we'll just be thinking about plan B's and C's, so if you've got any spare prayers uh, for wisdom on that, I'd appreciate that. Let's Let's have a moment of silence and then we'll pray and commit our service to the Lord. So Heavenly Father, thank you for Advent. Thank you that we look forward to Christ returning to fix the world, uh, to make a world where there are no coronaviruses. Uh, we thank you now for this time of worship and we pray that by your Holy Spirit uh, you would meet with and touch and help and encourage each one of us here, grow each one of us in faith, and hope and love. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our first hymn, and come, and come, in my name.
let's worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please sit. As we approach our God, we know we'll need his forgiveness. We know we'll need his help. Uh, but we also know he loves to give it. So let us pray the collect of purity, which is on the screen. As we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. And we know that cleansing comes from confession. The scriptures say, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. As we look forward to the return of Christ, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, Forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The scriptures would put us now as people who are walking in the light, and so we light our first candle on our Advent wreath, because we've been cleansed, we've been forgiven in Christ. So we pray together. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have our first reading. The reading this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up from David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah's, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing our second hymn. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus.
Melchizedek. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they, sp as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on your guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and the day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live upon the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. David, please sit down. It's lovely to be with you here on a glorious day, but a um, day that's very slippery underfoot. I do um, hope that you travel safely. The A17 was closed um, as I was coming across. I think there's been an accident. Uh, just be mindful of all who do travel, uh, not just locally, but um, those who are travelling to try to reach safety and who are in so much peril as they do. From St Luke chapter 21 verse 29, then he told them a parable, look at the fig tree. This is Jesus talking just before his death and even at this late point in his ministry Jesus is trying to teach. Use your eyes, use your ears, use your imagination. Make sense of what's going on. He urges his listeners. He may be about to accomplish his greatest work in Jerusalem, work that will demand his all, but he's still trying to shape and to prepare those around him for their life ahead. There is no self-preoccupation here. And there is an urgency, a directness to what Jesus is saying at this point that's different in quality from the parables that he uses elsewhere. What we have today is powerful stuff. I told them a parable. Look at the fig tree. Well, it so happens that a couple of years ago, I bought myself a fig tree. It sits in a pot outside my kitchen door, and I can look at it as I have my meals at the kitchen table. I've just taken it inside for the winter. I'm fascinated by my fig. I'm sure that I haven't found the best place for it in which to put down its roots yet, and I think that must explain why it's still in the pot. I've been trying to care for it. I've suddenly become very sensitive to its moods. The beautiful leaves come suddenly. A bright tip at first, and then very quickly, a big, dark green leaf. And then there are the figs which bud and grow over time, but are quite easy to knock off. Last year, I had a good crop. This year, none of them lasted until they could be picked. Earlier in Luke's Gospel, Jesus has also talked about the fig tree in another parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard 
and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig round it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. I understand this desire to care for the tree. And I understand the way in which the man comes looking for fruit and his frustration, stroke, fixation. The fig tree can provide a very clear picture of abundance. It can also suddenly look dried and dead. Going back to today's Gospel, I think Jesus is basing what he says on the direct way in which the fig can express things. And he's saying, notice what is staring you in the face. If the tree is in leaf, if the trees are in leaf, then it's summer. Trust your eyes. Trust your instincts. And if you trust your instincts about the turning of the seasons, trust your instincts in other things as well, most especially about the kingdom of God. And this is his major point, the centre of his teaching in so many ways, I think. We overcomplicate things and get distracted as we do. And Jesus says, don't overcomplicate. Don't get distracted. Focus. In difficult times and in good times, focus. Trust your instincts. Trust the God who created you, who loves you, who speaks to you through simple things like the leaves on the trees. Trust God and focus on his kingdom. And what is the Kingdom of God? Justice, good neighbourliness, love, or as St Paul puts it in Romans 14, 17, for the Kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. These are big things. But there are also things that can be worked on in very simple, practical ways. We can love. We can make peace. We can be joyful. And Jesus' point is that we know kingdom values and kingdom behaviour instinctively. When we see them, we recognise them but we can blind ourselves to them because of things that we allow to get in the way. So don't allow yourselves to be distracted. Trust your instincts. Proclaim God's kingdom. This is a clear message, I hope, for a clear Sunday. Advent Sunday is the first Sunday of the Church's year, the day on which everything can, as it were, <coughs> begin again. It's the day on which we can refocus and begin the preparations for the Feast of God with us, 
Christmas. It's the day in which we can all think, this, this is what I am going to do to point to God's kingdom in the world. I don't have to be wealthy or have a big job or be young and active or be anything. I, have, I can do all this by being myself. I, yes I, can make a difference. So let me just be very personal again. For most of lockdown, I had my mum living with me. My dad died three years ago, and it's been a bit of a struggle since, with ill health and lots of things that I won't go into. She's back in her own home at the moment, but will be coming to me again in a week's time to stay until Christmas, or perhaps beyond. She doesn't do computers, she doesn't do mobile phones, she now needs to walk with a wheeled frame. Lots of my family have said they're not going to send Christmas cards this year. Too much hassle, too expensive. It's all changed anyway because of the pandemic. But my mum is taking a different view. Something that she can do is to send a Christmas card will take hours for her to write them, but this is what she can do. And in her determination, I also see a picture of other things that I sent other people with perhaps differently limited opportunities can also do. And most importantly, we can pray, encourage, care, love. The point is to make the best of what we've got, of who we are, with whatever the opportunities that we may have. And the backbone of any church, of any community, is the people who keep it going through prayerful support. Everyone matters. Together we make a difference. And the most physically frail or vulnerable, the oldest and the youngest, are just as much vital parts of the community as anyone else. And we can all contribute as partners together. Indeed, it's often the most obviously vulnerable people who help the rest of us to see the leaves on the tree, as it were. Because they notice what's going on when I am caught up in my business. It doesn't need me to say that this has been a tough time, is a tough time for the whole world and that we have mountains to climb ahead of us as we continue to live with the COVID-19 virus, as we battle climate change, just to name two things. But I also sense that you don't need me to tell you that you have the resources here in this place and this community to make a real difference in these tough times as Christians. Because the greatest resource is yourself, powered by your faith, older and younger, richer and poorer, together. This church is resilient, is hopeful, is strong. Because of its focus on God and his kingdom. In different ways you will face challenges and you recognise that the way through is not by turning in on yourselves, but by reaching out 
to the God who loves you and to the neighbour who is alongside you. Let's not labour the past. Let's look towards the future. And as we all do these things together, we will become ever more closely the people that God would have us to be. It's a joy to be able to worship with you in person again. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to welcome and license Greg and Sophie in person in February and that we had to begin ministry together online and your ministry in Spalding online. But we make the best of what we have to face. We are able to worship more freely again. People are getting out and about. And through it all, together, you have kept on ministering and praying and serving in God's name. So thank you. Thank you, people of St John's, for your work for the Gospel. Thank you, people of St John's, for all that you will do in Jesus' name in this new season and Christian year together. Through everything, you have determinedly kept the flame of hope alive in this place and in your hearts. And it's this hope that sustains and encourages you into the future. Your ministry team, Greg and Sophie and Pat and Martin and your lay ministers and officers, your partnership with the school and with other churches in Spalding and with St George's, the links that you are building because the body of Christ is all about being with each other in faith and service. These are the things that underpin all that I know you are doing to serve God's people in Spalding and its surroundings. Thank you. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree. been trying to say that the signs of God's love and activity are all around us. I've been trying to say that everyone can notice them and point them out and contribute to them, no matter their own personal circumstances, if they trust their instinct and their heart. And I've been trying to say that to focus on God's kingdom is the right focus to have. And that this is a good day on which to refocus if you need to. And certainly on which to begin your preparations for the first great festival of the year, Christmas. Martin spoke about his sack of presents last week and the thank you letters that he wrote and the generosity that Paul received from the people of the church in Philippi. We have so much to be thankful for, to our generous God, above all for his love and mercy. May you know his blessing, this Advent, and always. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you encouraged us to reach out to God uh, in hope and in faith, and we'll do that now as we declare our faith in the words of the Greek. Please stand with me. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into death, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And please sit as we reach out to God further in prayer. The power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. We pray for the universal church during this time of coronavirus, for new challenges that this latest crisis poses to the local church and to the ministers and congregations. The coronavirus has not been eliminated completely, and we ask for both the patience and wisdom to act and live in a way that will ultimately see the end of this destructive virus. Help us not to give up trying, especially when we face new challenges, such as legal immigrants and the wars that cause them to flee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and its leaders we ask that they may be given wisdom to govern. We pray for the Queen and for the royal family. We ask that justice may be distributed fairly and that those who have plenty may not ignore their neighbour. We pray for the environment and for those who struggle to keep a responsible attitude towards green issues. We pray for refugees and for those who have lost their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have fallen sick at this time. We pray for medical staff and for all those who administer vaccine and tests. We pray for the airport staff and for the police who keep us safe when travelling and when visiting families. We pray for those who monitor the spread of the virus and we ask for wisdom and guidance to know how to respond to all the latest government advice. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Especially we pray for Ruth Wright, Margaret Rose, Dee Dee, Carol Hudson, Mark Duckworth, Kieran, Victoria Smith, Nina Hepplethwaite, Alex Barden, Paul and Helen Hardington, and Katie Lynn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who grieve and for those who have suffered bereavement. We pray for those who have lost something during the epidemic. We pray that they may not give up hope, but that they may trust that restoration is possible and God's help is not far from them. We ask that Christmas may be a time of reflection and peace, that cynical attitudes and despair will not ruin the Christian season of Christmas. Especially we remember Les Parkin and Richard Chad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may indeed put on the armour of life 
and cast away the worthless bosses. Give us the wisdom to discern how to live through the season of Advent. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep us focused on spiritual things and help us to have a hunger for more divine things. We pray that we do not cast away the things we call ugly or heavy or hard, that by faith we may see the angel hand that gives us the gift. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We are a community of faith. We've been brought together through the blood of Christ. Please stand as we share the peace with one another. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we do our socially distanced um, sign of peace. And we remain standing for our third gift.
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Hosanna in his might. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Hosanna in the might. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour visits.
we stand to receive our closing with low heat up to the clouds descending. <laughs> Thank you. 
As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.